While there are a lot of great benchmarking tools for computers in general, I've never felt that there was a test that answered all my questions specifically about Photoshop's performance, which is why I created GBench. This free UXP panel helps answer questions such as, how much will a computer upgrade and improve Photoshop for me? Will it speed up Adobe Camera Raw, resizing for print, and more. I've already installed GBench in Photoshop, which can be found under the plugins menu. You see that the panel here can be moved around. I can go and dock it down to a little icon. I can even go and just place it in a more permanent location if I want for easy access. And it just has two buttons, an ability to run the actual tests and some tutorials to help you make the most of this panel. Now, before we get into it, I do want to quickly note that if you're using the latest version of Lumenzia version 10 or my WebSharp Pro version 3.4, which is soon to be released, both of these have embedded GBench. If you go up to the flyout menu, go to utilities, you see that GBench is built right into these panels and it runs exactly the same way you're going to see here from the standalone panel. So there's no need to install this if you have Lumenzia or WebSharp Pro. To get started, we'll click on test and compare and we see the interface pops up with really just two parts. The top is the ability to compare previously run tests and the bottom includes the ability for us to go run new tests. And of course, that's where we want to start. To begin, go click on your test folder and set a destination location where the CSV output files will be saved as well as read from your previous tests. I've already run three tests, which you can see in the folder I have on the right, which is this folder here. So I've already set that and run some tests. And when I go to the drop down menus, you can see I have some saved tests here up top. We'll come back to this, but let's first run our own test. And this will be a good test because I'm currently running with some screen recording software active which means that things will run a little bit more slowly and I can get a sense of just how much that impacts Photoshop when that's running in the background. You can click proceed to just acknowledge that the test is gonna take some time. I would generally recommend leaving Photoshop open in the foreground to get the best measurement of how Photoshop performs when you're actively using it. You'll notice that most of these tests are looped several times and that's done simply because each run in Photoshop can vary just a little bit and averaging multiple runs can give us a more accurate and representative number. Also note that the image preview may not always match what you see as the current progress bar, and that's simply because Photoshop is not continuously refreshing the display while it's executing the script. Once the test is done, you'll see a pop-up showing the summary results, the test configuration used, and detail of the line item test, how fast were each of these specific subtests. Now up top in the test summary here, there's two numbers that jump out. The active test time is really just the time that the test took, not including any setup. The weighted time is the much more important and relevant number. And what this reflects is each of these tests down below, if you simply add them up, you're giving them equal weight. But not everyone's going to use motion blur, radial blur, surface blur, all these different filters. They may not be things you use all the time or that frequently, whereas something like camera raw might be something you use multiple times on an image. So these line items are weighted and then summed up to give us this weighted time. And I'll show you that detail in a moment but this is the best way to compare different runs and different tests. So that's the number you wanna look for. You don't really need to look at all this here because we're gonna save it to a CSV file and we'll dig in a little deeper. Note that I'm just gonna save the results by leaving this checked and say, okay. Now I have an option to save it and I'm just gonna call this screen recording active to just denote that's what was going on when I did this. And you can see it's been created here as an output. And if I go and drop down my results here, I now see that as a new test option. So I'm going to select that as my result aim. That's kind of my test. And for control, I'm going to pick a different test. And in this case, I'm going to scroll down and use the 2021 M1 Max. That's the machine I'm currently testing on. And this is the native test. The one beneath it showing under Rosetta is when I ran it actually under emulation. So let's choose this one. And we'll see here that the test time between the two is almost identical. Between 57 and 59 seconds weighted is a very small percentage change, meaning that when I have screen recording active, I'm seeing almost no slowdown in the performance of Photoshop. Of course, we can compare other tests that I've run and let's take a look at that. So up top here again, these are all the tests that I have in this folder off to the right. And here are my included tests. So these are the ones that you'll see when you install the panel. The ones up top are the ones that you're going to create yourself. Let's compare these two between running natively and running under Rosetta with the M1 Max. And what's re really interesting here, what shocked me when I ran this, is Rosetta is actually a huge penalty. It runs almost twice as long, in fact, 95% more time to run under Rosetta than running natively. So if you have an M1 machine, you definitely want to check and make sure you're running natively if you can. I also wanted to test against my 2018 MacBook Pro, and you can see here how much of an improvement I got between these machines, where the old machine took 92% more time to complete the tasks 
compared to my new M1 Max. So this new machine is literally almost twice as fast as the old computer. It's a really notable improvement. You could also take a look at some other tests that I've done here. For example, I ran the test with the GPU simply disabled in Photoshop, and you can see the increase in time here is actually not nearly as significant as you might think. So all the work the GPU is doing really is just saving me this amount of time, which is still a substantial difference, but perhaps not as much as you might expect. If I go and check what happens when I was running antivirus and a web browser in the background, it's an even smaller delta than running the background screen recording. Or I can go look and see what happens if I'm running Final Cut Pro, a very intensive video application exporting in the background. And you can see that that is starting to impact Photoshop performance. So if you have some really heavy applications running in the background, they might start to affect Photoshop performance. But I think what this shows is that in general, I'm not seeing much of a slowdown on this computer. It has a lot of excess capacity. And now if I wanna graph these, we can go and actually compare them directly on a graph. So I'm gonna go and let's take a look at that 2018 result, my old computer versus the new one. In fact, I'm gonna swap these because result A is kind of the main result and result B is really your control. So I'm gonna choose it like this and I'll say compare results. And now GBench is spitting out a graph to show me a comparison between the two. And you can just visually see what a substantial difference there is in the overall weighted time between these two machines. Now let's go dig into these CSV files. And I'm gonna go back in here and do one thing, which is to export the included tests because I have these tests down below, these three tests that ship with the panel, but they're not immediately accessible to you. The way you can get them is by clicking on this export included tests. And when you do so, it's gonna spit them out in your folder. So now I've got those three tests that were internal to the panel, as well as this Excel file that is acting as a template. I'll show you how we can compare things in a little more detail there. So just say, okay, I think we're done with this and let's now go work with the CSV files. So if I want, I can go open up one of the tests I just ran. And if I were to click into the name here, you can see that I've got things named a little bit more carefully here. Or if I open up the CSV file inside here, I can see the name of my test, which is right here with the screen recording active. That was the name I saved. It's showing up in cell 4B here. Of course, as a CSV file, it does not have any formatting to it. So it's not the easiest thing to read and you're gonna have to go and resize columns or whatever you might want to do. Or you can open up this template that I'm giving you in the panel and just simply copy and paste things over. In this template we have is an area to paste the data shown in this yellow cell and then an analysis tab, which is gonna be the formatted results. So let's go and grab this data. Go and just select everything, hit Command C to copy, then we'll switch back to the other one go up to the top and just paste right over this. And I'm gonna to choose to paste values so I don't lose the formatting here, not that it really matters. And then everything being aligned here is gonna pull over to this analysis tab. So now I've populated it with the data from that run. And you can see, for example, up top here, we've got our overall summary information with this blue value being the most important here, the weighted time. Beneath it in green, this is gonna be your own version. This has been added in and I'll come back to this in a moment, but everything else here is basically kind of a copy paste from the other results and just adding some formatting. For the test detail, you can see each of the individual tests. And if we were to take a look at one of these, for example, maybe surface blur, you can see what we have here is the test on average per loop was 9.65 seconds. That was calculated by running three loops and then averaging them to this value. And then within those loops, you can see the variability from the fastest to the slowest loop and it's quite consistent. So we're not seeing any red flags here that something happened during the test. But if one of these values was significantly different from the other, that might indicate that something happened in your machine to affect Photoshop performance, maybe a drive spun up or something like that. And that might be a reason to rerun your test if you're not seeing a lot of consistency in these values. But for the most part, you can see that the fastest and slowest numbers are nearly the same in, in most cases. Then moving over to the next one here, we have the weighting. And this is how we take these numbers and get up to this summary weighted number at top. So the way this math works is we would take a value such as the opening of the JPEG here and multiply it by its weight, which is one, and get to a number on the right. And there's some rounding in this data, so don't expect everything to match up exactly, but it's gonna be very, very close. And then we take the next row here, the brush size small, which is the 0.41, but this one has a weighting of five because we use the brush multiple times in an image. And so five times the 0.4 gets us to two and so on. So we then sum up all of these values from all the rows and that's gonna give us this sum up here. Now I am not gonna claim that the weights that I use here are perfect. 
you will certainly disagree with me on some of these points, which is why you can add your own weighting in the green columns here. But I've provided these values in order to give you consistency so you can compare with other people and just give you an example of how you might approach this. And my general philosophy here is think of this as the number of times you might do something on average in an image. So we open an image once, we use a brush multiple times, something like auto alignment, maybe we're only gonna use 10% of the time, so I gave it a 0.1 and so on down the list. For example, something like radial blur is not used by that many photographers or that many images, so I gave it a much smaller value. But if you want it with your own weighting, you could change this. Maybe you use the radial blur quite a bit. Maybe you use it on all your images. So you can set this to one. And then when you do that, you're gonna see that your value gets repopulated here with a new weighted value. And this weighted value is only gonna be relevant to another set of tests run with the exact same weights. So don't try to compare these two numbers. That's meaningless, they have different weights. But this 69.6 I have right now, I could compare this to another condition when I run my machine and use these same weights, or perhaps a friend's machine who has different hardware that I'm considering buying, and I could see how they compare in a way that might feel more relevant to you. And lastly, I wanna note there's um, various comments here. You can hover and get a little more information about these tests to review what I've covered, as well as some notes below. And then down below in the test configuration are just notes of how the test was run. So for example, I did not run this test with Rosetta on my Apple Silicon machine. This would not apply to a Windows machine, for example, but it would apply to those of you using an M1. And it shows how much RAM was in the system or available to Photoshop and so on, because these are various performance aspects that might affect your results. And so they're just recorded for your convenience here. And now click to this next video to learn more about how to optimize Photoshop performance.